The U.S. is sending another 500 troops to Europe as the war in Ukraine intensifies. Those forces will be deployed to several countries to defend NATO's flank. Ukraine has also created a special unit of foreign fighters to help combat Russian forces. Dubbed the International Legion, Ukraine says already more than 20,000 volunteers, many of them veterans from 52 countries, have now expressed a desire to join. Joining us now to discuss the fight here, the broader response in Europe, retired U.S. Army Brigadier General Steve Anderson. Steve, it's, it's good to have you here this morning. First, I, I want to ask you your view of the state of the battle on the ground. We're, we're 12 days in, Thursday will be two weeks. It's already a longer, more difficult fight than Russia expected, but Russia has a tremendous numerical advantage and it's forging ahead, particularly in the south, and, and it's becoming more ruthless. It's targeting cities. Where does the fight stand? Look, it's the, the, stand, the fight stands very well right now due to really one factor, the will of the Ukrainian people. Uh, they are showing their fortitude. They're putting up an incredible fight. Uh, they're making it extremely difficult for the Russians to resupply their forces. You know, uh, this is turning into a logistics war in some respects, and that uh, it's a race between uh, our ability and NATO's ability to push forward supplies, such as the 17,000 missiles that have been recently approved, to get those into the hands of the Ukrainian warfighters before the Russians can regroup and get their logistics lines of communication and their capabilities up to snuff. Um, you have seen many, many instances of their inability to resupply their forces. Now, I was a senior logistics officer in Iraq. Most people don't realize the magnitude of the effort over there. I was providing in Iraq 900 trucks a day to sustain those forces, and our forces were less, they were smaller. I mean, you're talking about feeding a city the size of Mobile, Alabama, with 190,000 troops in in uh, in Ukraine right now for Russia. So, so we are seeing uh, a great will of people uh, from Ukraine to interdict the lines of communication, the resupply lines, and keep the Russians off balance. I feel like we have talked about that lack of logistical planning on the Russian side. You know, as Jim pointed out earlier, and some pretty clear miscalculations on the part of Vladimir Putin. What's also been interesting, and this is actually something that Jim and I were discussing earlier this morning, is that. There doesn't seem to be more of an effort on the part of Russians, on the part of, of Russia, rather, to go after communications. Yes, there was an early hit, we know, on the TV tower. But in terms of lines of communication and the ability for people within Ukraine to continue to communicate, they're going after the electric grids. They haven't really hit that. Does that surprise you, General? No, really, I don't really think that they're that really effective at, at, at identifying. I don't think they have the kind of intelligence. I don't think they have the boots on the ground intelligence. I don't think they have the capabilities to really um, uh, put the kind of impact that they want to on the communication system. They would have done that if they had that capability. They just aren't as, as good as we've been led to believe. And their performance has been very, I mean, it's been miserable, really. Um, if you look at them uh, from a tactical standpoint, they're obviously not achieving the tactical objectives. They're not gaining any objectives on the ground. Operationally, they're failing as well. They, they have essentially attacked Ukraine on four fronts. They have violated the principle of mass. They would have been much better off contributing their forces in the north and attacking the center of gravity in Ukraine, which is, of course, the capital of Kiev. And then they, strategically, they failed miserably. They have essentially enabled the entire NATO community in the United States to unify and essentially isolate them. And it's been a, a miserable effort on their report. So I'm not surprised that they can't take out, take out our communications towers when they can't even do the basic warfaring skills that we'd expect them to do. The, the concern among NATO allies, particularly those in the East, those facing Russia, is that Ukraine is not the end of Putin's ambitions. And by the way, when you listen to what he says, not just about Ukraine, but about the Baltic states, for instance, as to whether they are actual nations that should be independent. You can understand that concern. You, you have 500 more U.S. troops going to those Baltic states. You've had some other moves of aircraft, etc. Are those sufficient moves in your view? I think they are for the time being. Um, we need to get more troops, uh, more boots on the ground. I think that uh, the 500 people there are going to provide additional planning capability. Um, intelligence analysts that we no doubt need over there, and logisticians. I mean, there's going to be a huge humanitarian crisis. There already is. 
And so the extent that our, our uh, military can assist, I mean, our logistics capability is a profound reflection of our national power. Our ability to protect troops, supplies, and equipment across the globe is unparalleled. And we need to bring all the forces to bear that power to help these people and to help relieve the humanitarian crisis. I mean, it's all about Ukraine. I mean, if Ukraine falls, then I think we're going to have problems in the Baltic, we're going to have problems in Hungary, we're going to have problems in Romania, Poland, etc. But if we can put up a fight, and if we can leverage those, the, the incredible will of the Ukrainian people and sustain them and empower them and push supplies that they need to, to be able to do that and to put up a fight, that's, that's, uh, that's going to make sure that we, we carry the day. Brigadier General Steve Anderson, appreciate your insight this morning. Thank you. Yeah.